ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, what would it take to get back home if you were standing on the moon? Imagine this, you're an astronaut, standing on the dusty surface of the moon, looking at the distant Earth hanging like a beautiful blue marble in the sky, but now the mission is over, and it's time to come home. The question is, how do you get back? Before we dive into the journey back to Earth, let's quickly rewind and understand how you even got to the moon in the first place. It all starts with launching a spacecraft from Earth. This spacecraft is your lifeline, getting you to the moon and most importantly back. For example, NASA's Apollo missions used the famous Saturn V rocket to escape Earth's gravity and head towards the moon. Once you're in space, you enter something called translunar injection. This is the process where your spacecraft gets the boost needed to head towards the moon. After a journey of about three days, your spacecraft enters the moon's orbit. But that's only half the trip. Once you're on the moon, the real challenge is getting back home. Preparing for liftoff from the moon. Okay, so you've spent some time on the moon, planted a flag, collected rocks, maybe even jumped around in low gravity. Now it's time to leave. First things first, you need to get back into lunar orbit. This is where your trusty spacecraft comes into play, specifically the lunar module, also called the LEM in Apollo missions. Lifting off from the moon is a lot different from launching from Earth. Why? Because the moon's gravity is much weaker, about one-sixth of Earth's. This means it takes way less energy and fuel to launch from the moon's surface. The lunar module uses a small engine to break free from the moon's surface and start its journey to the next crucial phase, docking with the command module. Docking in lunar orbit. Once you're in lunar orbit, you're halfway there. Now, remember. The spacecraft that brought you to the moon has two main parts, the lunar module which you used to land and take off and the command module which stayed orbiting the moon while you were busy exploring. The next big step is to reunite with the command module. Docking in space is a delicate operation. It requires precision as both spacecraft are moving extremely fast around 1.5 kilometers per second. But thanks to careful planning and modern technology, it's totally doable. Once docked, you transfer from the lunar module to the command module. Now you're back in the main spacecraft, the one that will take you home. Heading back to Earth, trans-Earth injection. Next up, the journey home. This stage is called trans-Earth injection where your spacecraft fires its engine and begins the return trip to Earth. Once the engines are fired, you're on a free return trajectory, which means you'll naturally get pulled back to Earth by its gravity. This journey takes around three days, the same time it took to get to the moon. But while you're floating in the vastness of space, there's a lot to think about. Astronauts have to monitor their spacecraft systems, ensure life support is functioning, and prepare for the next critical moment, re-entry. Re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Now comes one of the most intense parts of the journey, re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Here's the thing. When you return from the moon, you're traveling at a blazing speed, about 40,000 kilometers per hour. Hitting Earth's atmosphere at this speed would be like diving into a swimming pool from the top of a skyscraper without slowing down. To prevent the spacecraft and astronauts from burning up, it's equipped with a heat shield. This shield absorbs and deflects the extreme heat caused by friction with the atmosphere, which can reach temperatures over 2,700 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than lava. As the spacecraft plummets through the atmosphere, it slows down dramatically, thanks to both the heat shield and Earth's thick atmosphere acting like a brake. Splashdown and recovery. Once the spacecraft has safely passed through the atmosphere, it's time for the final stage, splashdown. Large parachutes deploy to slow the command module even more, allowing it to gently float down into the ocean. This is where recovery teams come in. In the Apollo missions, the command module splashed down into the Pacific Ocean, where Navy ships and helicopters were waiting to retrieve both the spacecraft and the astronauts. Once aboard the ship, the astronauts go through medical checks, debriefs, and finally head home. The mission is complete, and they're back on Earth, safe and sound. What about the future of moon travel? So, that's how astronauts return to Earth during the Apollo missions. But what about future moon missions? Will things be the same? With NASA's Artemis program and private companies like SpaceX working on moon missions, the process will be similar but more advanced. New spacecraft designs will have more fuel-efficient engines, better heat shields, and modernized landing systems. Artemis aims to bring astronauts back to the moon and eventually beyond, to places like Mars. The big picture. Bringing astronauts back from the moon might sound like a scene from a sci-fi movie, 
but it's a delicate and calculated process. From the moment you leave the Moon's surface, to docking in lunar orbit, traveling through space, re-entering Earth's atmosphere, and finally splashing down in the ocean, every step is crucial. The most amazing part, humans figured out how to do all of this more than 50 years ago, with technology far less advanced than what's in your pocket today. It's a testament to human curiosity, innovation, and our desire to explore the unknown. So what's next? Will you be part of the generation that goes back to the moon and brings back many new stories and experiences? Time to make up your mind. Till then, keep watching, and be sure to subscribe and join us on our next journey into space.